Yes, that's fine. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the City of Delray Beach's it's a special meeting, yes, uh, scheduled for March 28th, 2023 at 4 p.m. Please call the roll. Mr. Frankel? Present. Ms. Cassell? Here. Mr. Boylston? Present. Ms. Johnson? Present. Mayor Petrolia? Here. We have uh, three items. The first is going to be the proposed settlement in the case of uh, Michael Coleman. That would be... That's actually a consent agenda item, but if oh. you have any questions, I'm happy Sorry. to answer. You're right. SP1 and SP2 are both consent. So we have two consent items on the agenda. Um, if there's no Motion questions, thank you. Second. Call the roll, please. Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mayor Petrolia? Yes. Mr. Franco? Yes. Ms. Cassell? Yes. I, I kind of want to make a, a comment about the two items, if I can. Sure. I, I just want to say that um, this in no way is a decision made by this board for the purpose of being correct or not correct. This is a business decision we had to make behind closed doors. We were um, offered, uh, we offered up a settlement that made sense to our, our, our attorneys and also our insurers um, that basically come into play. And so if anybody's wondering once this is out and about why we made this decision, when an insurer tells you that you have to settle because they're willing to settle at a certain amount and you choose not to do that, you take on the liability as a city for anything that might be gotten in court of law beyond that point. So it was a decision that was made heavy hearted for me, I can say that for myself, but um, just so people understand why we made it and why there's a, there's a pretty much a, a unanimous decision because we did have these conversations behind closed doors. So. It, it, we're, this is the first time we're really in, in, in the front of public meeting and talking about it. So I just wanted to make sure I made that comment. Moving on to the regular agenda um, item, which is the discussion of the public-private partnership proposal for the municipal golf course. And who will take that away? Mr. Moore. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I will simply at this time like to introduce CBRE Senior Vice President Leanne Corse, who is here to offer a comprehensive presentation based on the events and experiences associated with this particular consideration. So, Ms. Course, I am looking to locate you. She's online. I'm right here. Thank I hope you. you can see and hear me. Can hear you. She's on our screen. Oh, okay. Yep. She's at yeah. the bottom. We see you, Leanne. Okay, excellent. I can't see you, so um, so bear with me on that front. But um, with that, I think we're ready to go into the presentation. And I first want to thank you for asking us to return and present this afternoon. Um, is the presentation up? I think they're getting it up now. Okay. There it is, excellent. So um, we have engaged in a, lot, in a lot of important work since we were last before you at the commission workshop on February 7th, um, primarily conducting community outreach and collecting community feedback, which I'll talk about in just a little while. Um, however, on this next slide, you'll see a timeline of activities um, commencing in April of last year um, and taking us through issuing the RFP, as well as the four public meetings that occurred in February and March this year. Um, importantly, I think what we've highlighted here is there have been 10 opportunities to hear about the city's activities and participate in public meetings rep representing a real um, open and transparent um, process. So on the uh, next slide, we're going to talk about um, the development overview. And importantly, we have a team of professionals who evaluated the proposals and contributed to the analysis, including uh, Richard Singer from the National Golf Foundation, who's there uh, today, Matt Kazaya, who's a construction manager and has worked on a number of golf and country club projects, so as a subject matter expertise there, and looking at the proposals through a construction lens. 
And then we have our local real estate experts, Chris Smiles and uh, Kirk Sidwell, um, and they are local to the to the area. But Chris's family lived in Delray Beach for decades, and Kirk and his fiance are current Delray Beach residents. Um, and then finally, Shane Millen is with me on video. He performed the financial analysis of the proposals and Mike McShay uh, leads our public sector practice nationally. So now I'm going to turn it over to Matt and uh, Richard to refresh our memories regarding the development teams, the golf proposals, and then I'll um, come back and, and give you a recap of the community feedback. Thank you. Thank you, Leanne. Good afternoon, Madam Mayor and Commissioners. As Leanne said, my name is Matthew Kaziah. I'm the Director of Project Management for CBRE here in Palm Beach County. Uh, we'll be rotating through about 12 slides here today uh, and going back and forth with Richard, myself, Leanne, and uh, Shane, our financial analyst. So just to refresh everyone's memory, here you can see on this slide, to the left are, are four developers that remain. Uh, originally in November we had six it's since been narrowed down to the four you see here today and then along the top on the, the header there you see the, the the core project team that each of the developers proposed uh, for the for the p3 development uh, going down the left from top to bottom in alphabetical order first we have Bobby Jones links Mill Creek uh, out of Boca Raton uh, they are only local uh, Palm Beach County developer uh, in Mill Creek uh, to Palm Beach County I should say uh, CGH uh, Capital Group Hensel Phelps developments they are a joint venture partnership uh, with Capital Group being local to South Florida as well Heatherwood luxury rentals they are New York based uh, with some experience in P3 golf course uh, developments and then of course uh, the related group based out of uh, Miami-Dade County uh, as well. So each of these teams, uh, what I should say first off and foremost, is all, are all qualified to deliver on this project. Uh, the two that we narrowed down previously, they were qualified as well. Their vision just wasn't quite in line with the, the spirit of the, the original RFP. Uh, so the, uh, the, the, the big one for, for, the, for the project here is the golf architect. Uh, I'm not going to take too much of Richard Singer's thunder there, but <laughs> each of the developments will have about two, two to three principal architects, first and foremost being the golf course architect. Then there will be a clubhouse architect associated with, 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 with whatever work takes place at the clubhouse. And then for the private component, some of them have chose to bring in um, independent or a, a third architect to, to help with that design. And in general, they all have a, or not in general, they all do have a, a private multifamily component and many of these these architects specialize in multifamily developments. So we're not going to go through and read every every firm here. Uh, I should say that there are so, many of these firms are local. Some of them architects are, are based here in Delray Beach and, and Palm Beach County along with their construction managers that they propose. So like I said all are capable to deliver on the spirit of the project and what they proposed and I'll hand it over to Richard now to talk about the golf development. Thank you, Matt. I'm Richard Singer with the uh, National Golf Foundation, and good to see you all again. I've been the uh, off and on city uh, golf consultant for, for many, many years, and, and have had a lot of experience in looking at the, the Delray Beach uh, Golf Club. Uh, you can move it to the next, uh, the next slide. Are we moving? Uh, oh, I have it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the golf course proposals that have been put forth in the four remaining teams uh, show a nice mix and a, a variety of options for the city to consider in terms of your golf in terms of your golf course. It's a mix of designers, including several uh, national names and, and well-established names in golf, um, including uh, Reese Jones and uh, and, the, and the Nicholas Group and um, Eric Larson with uh, with Beth Daniel, a, a local uh, a golf personality, and. Um, the last one was um, Tyler Ray with uh, Heatherwood. And they are all proposing basically to retain the general spirit of the golf of course that exists there today. There will be some subtle changes, uh, some modernization that they're all proposing. They're uh, all proposing to retain at least seven of the uh, Donald Ross, historic Donald Ross holes that exist there. Most of them are, are proposing to retain all nine of the historic Donald Ross holes and make only subtle changes to 
uh, the other nine holes that ultimately will retain the basic character of the type of parkland golf course that exists there today, but with some subtle changes that will support a more modern game of golf as well as support some of the, the pullout, the seven or so acre pullout that they're looking to do um, in order to help uh, the, the, as the financing mechanism for these renovations. Um, two of the proposers are proposing new clubhouses. Uh, two are proposing to renovate the existing clubhouse. All of them are proposing to include some type of high-tech driving range and practice facility with uh, uh, modern technologies. Um, all of them are promoting a wide variety of fees with a wide range of discounts specifically focused towards City of Delray Beach residents. Um, and they're all proposing a various level of programming and leagues and events and all of that that will provide the basic golf community uh, outreach that I think is as appropriate for a municipal golf course like this. Um, so we're, we're here to to answer whatever questions that you have about that, but I think that um, you've seen the presentations from the various proposers and you have an idea of what the subtle differences are, but ultimately they're all proposing to bring you an upgraded modern 18-hole championship golf course. And I think that that was one of the key things that you had indicated in your RFP from the very beginning. I don't know who's up next. I'm back again. Okay, so this next slide really talks about the, the private uh, development, the one of the P's in the P3 in exchange for some parcel of land. Uh, each of these developers is proposing building a, 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 a private development on the site. Uh, to the right, what I really like to have, have everyone focus on here on the right column of the 148 acres that consist of the Delray Beach Golf Club. At the smallest, with related, they're proposing seven acres of that 140 acres to go for their private development. And then the other three are within 10 acres of, or, or at 10 acres. So a very small percentage of the golf course and all of the, and I should point out all of those developments would be fronting Atlantic Avenue. Uh, those, those developments, um, are, are taking about 10 acres of the, the total 148 acres. So going back to the top left corner, I'll just run down the, 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 the big elephant in the room, the development uh, that each of these is proposing, with, uh, starting with Mill Creek. So the first is 650 units. They are, have the highest density of, uh, of, of private development on the site. I should point out that that's a phase development, so it's not 650 units all being brought on at one time. The first phase consists of 375 units and then the balance coming in a second phase. And those develop, and that uh, private, uh, or the, ap the apartment complex project would um, be a five-story development in a wrap configuration. So what that means, it's a, all the, all the units uh, wrap a, a central parking garage, so the parking garage that, you know, you, with 650 units, you do need a, a, a good number of parking spots. That garage would be hidden from site in that development. Moving down the list with uh, Capital Group, Pencil Phelps, they're proposing 312 units along with 128 key hotel. The hotel will be five stories. The, 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 the 312 units for the apartment building will be cons consists of three buildings, uh, five stories each. For Heatherwood, it's a much more spread out development. Uh, they're three story garden style apartments uh, with about, I'd say about 25 or so buildings. Uh, dotted along Atlantic Avenue and then coming down on, on a central uh, corridor on the front co third of the golf course. And then finally related has is proposing 444 units, again in a five-story wrap configuration, so they would be shielded from Atlantic Avenue. And they are also proposing on their seven acres 24 villas as well. All would be uh, for rent, uh, no condos, it would all be uh, rental apartments. And then each of them will propose, will have some component of uh, mixed use, uh, or I'm sorry, affordable housing. And you can see that breakdown there in that column showing their, their, uh, their affordable housing component. Again, the only developer proposing any sort of hotel of the remaining four is CGHP and Hensel Phelps, 128 keys. And they're proposing a, a Spring Hill Suites product at the moment. And then, uh, each has a, a little bit of a, some have a, some, a retail component. So Mill Creek, you can see has 8,000 square feet of retail along, along Atlantic Avenue, uh, 1,400 feet for CGHP, 
Uh, and then Heatherwood has an entertainment facility and restaurant located within, within their clubhouse. So with that, Leanne, I'll turn it back over to you to talk about the- Matthew, before you move yes. on, um, I remember, because i just written it down, that um, the Hansel Phillips group was a four-story, not a five-story. You said five-story. Uh, the reason I remember say, hearing that is because of the last meeting, they said, well, if you'll allow us to do five stories, we'll do five stories. I remember that. Yeah, specific. I might need to go back and clarify that. Okay, because I, I think it's I apologize. Yeah. Anyway, just, yeah, and, yeah, I'm sure somebody's here that can correct me if I'm wrong or whatever. Right, I'll go back sure and check my notes. I just thank don't you. have it committed to memory. And then, I, thank you for pausing me. I just wanted to mention one last um, important detail here. Three of, of, of three of these four are proposing a, a fee simple exchange for the for the private land. CGHP Hensel Phelps is not proposing any fee simple exchange of the land. It would be a lease as well. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Leanne. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. Um, so on on slide six, um, we are just listing out the statistics related on attendance for the community outreach sessions. The bottom line is we had a total of 265 individuals attend the four outreach meetings in February and, and March and at commission uh, direction and request and for citizen convenience, the meetings were held in various places around the city um, as well as, as, as different times of the day, including evenings and a Saturday morning. So with that slide seven, we um, start to get into the summary of input um, and CBRE has probably 25 P3s going on at any given time nationally. And I think the city has balanced both the sharing and the listening, um, both of which are extremely important so that on the sharing side, residents are aware of what's going on. And once they know what's going on, they have an opportunity to then provide feedback. Um, at the February meeting, a full presentation was provided, followed by community feedback. The other three meetings were really tailored more toward receiving community feedback, um, given that the two presentations were already provided by CBRE, as well as the developer presentations on March 2nd. However, hard copies of all four presentations were provided at those meetings, um, as well as on the city's website. So, this this is you know not intended to be a list of every single comment that was made but we tried to summarize the the topics um that really came up repeatedly first and foremost traffic um that was the most frequently expressed concern i believe um and then giving up green space uh several residents were opposed to to any any uh, green space giving up being given up even though a large portion of the of the golf course obviously remains um there was concern about a hotel being across from the, the high school and uh, financing without private development offsetting the cost um really came up repeatedly and it was uh, oftentimes referred to the quote fifth option in addition to the four proposals before you and finally, the safety of a walking or biking trail. So I think importantly, if if this commission wants to move forward with any of the four proposals, many of the concerns could be considered during the negotiation process. For example, um, conducting an independent traffic study to determine how to mitigate impact, just as, as one example. Um, slide eight really represents the online survey results regarding the most important aspects of the project. Um, number one being, you know, the maintaining of, of the 18 hole uh, championship course. Um, and you all have already heard that feedback and eliminated two proposals to ensure that number one was accomplished. And again, I think improvement to all of the other elements can be negotiated um, throughout the process should you decide to, to move forward. Um, next page is uh, just a summary of some of the community benefits. I think Richard talked a little bit about some of them previously, but they range from junior programs to clubhouse improvements, new or renovated that can be used for various functions, new practice areas and driving ranges, resident rates and tea time preferences, um, as well as workforce housing, which is a chronic need, not only in your community, but in many communities. 
So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Shane to talk about the financial analysis. And then Matt's going to uh, talk about the schedule and and we'll wrap up. Thanks, Leanne. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, looking at this from a financial lens, we really have four great proposals for the city to consider. Um, each proposal gave really good detailed information about what they wanted to do with the land for both public and private improvements and what the financial benefits of the city would be. Uh, this page here serves as a comparison tool for, for review of each proposal and prevent, presents the scope and financial details uh, from each proposer. Um, I'm going to skip over the top of the page, which just lays out the physical details from each proposal. Matt discussed this earlier um, during this presentation, uh, but that just goes over who is presenting what, multifamily, um, retail, restaurant, et cetera. I'll move on to the capital budget on the middle middle section, which really um, com uh, includes two main components, uh, the public improvements or the golf improvements, and that's really the um, cost to improve the golf course and any other um, public components that the city um, needed in the RFP. The second line item is the private uh, private improvements, which uh, are what's funding their own multifamily uh, restaurant, et cetera, private components that they wanted. This ranges from uh, $167 million in total to $320 million in total. Um, the bottom of this slide here uh, really focuses on the benef benefits of the city. And this is broken down to a few different components. Uh, first is golf course operation revenue. Second is property tax revenue. And then the third component is uh, the master lease payments and master lease um, uh, gross ground rent revenue um, that uh, I can go into detail in a second. But one thing I want to point out is that for the golf course revenue and the property tax revenue, these were all detailed out in each proposal um, with a wide, wide range of uh, outcomes for the city. For example, the golf course revenue ranges from 188000 a year to $1 million a year. And that really just depends on how the proposer uh, laid out their management agreement with the city. For the ground rent revenue and the annual lease payments, master lease payments, this is due to the uh, CGHP uh, proposal that Matt discussed earlier, where the city would be paying off master lease payments for the public and private components of this, for the public components of the city and in turn, the city would be receiving revenue from these private components for a net zero cost to the city. Finally, at the bottom of the section, this highlights the NPV benefit to the city for 99 years at a 5% discount rate. And as you can see, this, this ranges from a benefit of 69 million to 82 million for the city. Thank you, Shane. Uh, so just one final point on the schedule in the RFP process. We asked all the respondents to provide a timeline and a milestone schedule for their proposed development. Uh, first and foremost, and I think the biggest takeaway for this slide for, 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 this, for the city residents and the commission here is that golf would be a priority among, amongst all four of the developers. So <clears throat> naturally with any large development or any development, there's gonna be a, a planning and zoning permitting process and a building permitting process that we all know can take a number of, of, of months and some time. But in every case, uh, all the, the developers will be prioritizing golf and our recommendation to you would be that we ink that in, you know, should we move forward with any of these respondents, that that be rolled into the negotiations and at least that the golf course be brought on online sooner so, and first along with the clubhouse. So with each of these, you can see the proposed durations that they came back to. Uh, don't, don't pay too much attention to the, the months and the dates that are contained in this. Really, it's from the, the date that we kind of agreed to move forward. That would be the number of months that uh, uh, it would take to bring these, each of these components online. Uh, so for the golf course, generally, it's you know a, a 10 to 14 month process. Related didn't have theirs uh, carried in, in, a, uh, in, in a phased approach. Uh, but like I said, as part of the negotiation, uh, we, we would recommend that, that, that golf be brought online 
sooner. I think that number more represents their clubhouse, which would be along the Atlantic Avenue uh, corridor because they are proposing a larger new clubhouse. Their clubhouse was 25,000 feet. Um, so there, you can kind of see that the total duration for, you know, speaking to, to Mill Creek and Bobby Jones, you can see that their, their total duration is, is 68 months. The reason for that is they have the largest project, right? And they have a phased project, where, whereas the others are, are, are more condensed and, and in some cases smaller. So their, their, their schedule was, was pushed out a little longer. But just for, just for comparison purposes, we wanted to show you the proposed schedule for each of them. Leanne? Thanks. Um, so here on slide 12, we show you um, how the, the proposer plans to finance the project with sources and percentages of debt and equity and letters of commitment um, as well. Where references weren't provided, case studies um, were, which demonstrated their experience. Um, so moving on then to the next slide and wrapping things up, um, as we said at the start, the good news is that if you decide to move forward with the P3, the city has quality teams to choose from and it's a community asset. So we thought it was important to list out some of the things that were um, we heard were important to golfers and, and potentially non-golfers um, that can still enjoy um, the, the assets associated with the redevelopment. So with that, our presentation is concluded and we are happy to answer any questions. Very good, thank you so much, Leanne. Um, you know, I wanted to take just a, a minute or two to kind of set the stage because I, I, I went to a, one of the meetings and I have received a lot of feedback um, back. So I wanted to go over some things just to make sure that the audience knows and is aware um, of the observations that I have and maybe some of my colleagues as well. So in one of the, in, in the meeting over at uh, Pompey Park, um, there was a question of the option five. The option five being none of the options, one, two, three, or four. That's 100% on the table, always has been. You know, this is a, uh, a, a choice that we're making moving forward. Um, and if none of these really suits the commission, we don't have to choose one. So just understand that, because I know there was a lot of questions with respect to whether or not there was the ability to be able to say no to all of the proposals. The other uh, couple of things that I wanted to make sure that people understood is that this course did not get into its condition in the last decade. How do I know this? I was elected 10 years ago. And upon my election, I already had people coming to me saying our course is in horrible form and bad repair. We started trying to work on this from that point forward and unfortunately we didn't get anywhere. Um, we did have some money at one point in time in order to be able to repair the course. At that point, at that point, I think it was three million and some odd and some change. And by the way, you could probably speak to this even earlier than me because um, the vice mayor uh, was was a member of this commission before I was a member of this commission. So I'm sure he probably could could add to that and say that it's been 13 years that we've been having uh, to do something with this course. But so to say that it was in pristine condition and it just fell down over the last decade is incorrect because we've been trying to do something with it. And like I said, we had over $3 million set aside to fix the course. At that point in time, we had a different city manager and the city manager said we can't do it because we have infrastructure that has to be done. And the infrastructure was now an issue that the $3 million wasn't going to touch it. So where were we going to get that and why didn't we have that information when we were actually moving forward with trying to put this in our CIP projects of things to be done. With that, we started to talk about how are we gonna get this kind of money. At that point in time, it was I think $10 million for the infrastructure and we still had the course to be able to do and the clubhouse. And then we had things that happened in our city as happens in every city where one CIP project becomes more important than another CIP project. And unfortunately, this one was leapfrogged and we didn't even have the money for that major infrastructure a job to be done. And we went into you know, COVID and everything else and here we are 10 years later doing nothing with the course. So that's really kind of where we are today. And one of the things that in the last two meetings, the last two goal setting meetings that we've had is to try to figure out how do we do this and deliver? 
and not get caught up again where we have money set aside, but something more important comes along and shoves the golf course out of the way. And, and, and three, to make sure that it gets done. That's really what we were facing. So this commission came to the conclusion that we would look to a P3 projects potentially and bring it before the city. And that's really where we are today because we couldn't bring to the commission to the to the people anything that an outside uh, uh, party would consider doing if we didn't know what they were willing to do. That's not possible for us. So we had to do it in this fashion to be able to let everybody know what is available and realistically available, not just what we're going to say we could possibly get. So that brings us to today. And this is not an easy decision for any of us because I know there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of um, emotion with our with our golf course, and I, I feel it too. I mean, I I come from that feeling of never wanting to give away, you know, green space. Don't want to give away land, uh, you know, that we don't need to. But the question that I have for everybody who has been attending is, if we don't do this, are we okay with another several years, maybe even five, of doing nothing? Because in government, we don't have the same ability to be able to make things move forward as they can in private sector. We have to go through surveying, we have to go through consultants, we have to make sure that everything's okay. And you know, all these different, uh, you know, uh, uh, I don't even know what you would call them, but anyway, we have to go through the, the exactly. And it, and it takes time. In addition, we have to make sure that the money's there before we start going forward. So this was an opportunity for us to be able to possibly bring something quicker within several years or a couple of years that the city would not be able to do and to make sure that it gets done. So the trade-off is, is what these companies are willing to put forward worth it or not? And that's the question that's facing us and what we've been listening to most of the audience and we've been hearing from the letters that we've been receiving. So we're reading them, we know what you're feeling, and, um, and that brings me to where we are. So let me start with my commission to express, I just wanted to make sure I laid that out because I know that there's been a lot of misinformation out there. Oh, and by the way, at one of the meetings, I was even thinking that it was only a $1.5 million infrastructure because I heard that number. Um, need and I thought to myself as I was sitting in the audience why would we even do a P3 if we only had 1.5 million dollars worth of infrastructure that was needed that was only for one little tiny part of what needs to be done underneath so basically it is a probably 12 to 15 million dollar infrastructure investment in that property in order to be able to do what in order to be able to move forward and the only reason why we're not putting that on the, the uh, well, one of the reasons that it was never put on the utilities is because utilities, um, it, isn't, it isn't needed right now to have to change that. But if we do the, the work above, we have to do the work below. So that's the reason why it's together with this whole deal of moving forward with the golf course. That's my, the best way to explain it so that everybody understands opening it up to my commission. Anybody want to start? Well, uh, I'll start uh, first by saying thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, Thank you for taking the time to lay um, all that out because I think it's just, uh, it's really important information on how we got here today, um, especially because many of us are trying to take care of so many, so many um, items across our city that need to be built or rebuilt or added to our city. Um, as many of you know, new water treatment facility, which we did a revenue bond for. Thank you, new police station, fire department upgrades and park improvements will be funded with the GEO bond. Um, new community center will be funded through the CRA at Pompeii Park. Um, the golf course upgrade, we thought a public-private partnership would be a great, way, a great way to fund that. And I've heard from voters over the years that we don't do enough of those because we don't really do any of those. Meanwhile, our sister cities, especially one right next door in Boynton Beach, has, has leveraged that, has leveraged the market. So we thought we could do that. Meaning we're using all the tools in our toolbox to fund all of these projects and get these done, get all of these things done. And if we were to able to use all those tools, 
then we can address some of the other infrastructure needs, such as City Hall and some mm -hmm. other buildings. We could probably do that through staggered funding model across a few years in our budget. That we can make work. Um, I think it's really just important what we were trying to do, what we were working for. And whether you agree with certain aspects or not, it was a heavy lift. And it took a very diverse uh, funding model in order to maybe address all those things in a matter of years, mm -hmm. which would be pretty amazing. Now, what I will say, that was a lot for the community to swallow, right? It was a lot for us to have to educate you on all at once asking you to during an election where you're already making very important decisions right on on who your who your community leaders will be moving forward already an incredible amount of information coming at you from every angle especially your mailbox but during that time we were also asking you to make a very important decision about a geo bond um uh two geo bonds actually a hundred million dollar geo bond and 20 million dollar geo bond and all at the same time we were asking you to understand this uh, public-private partnership in regards to our golf course. That was a lot to ask of you. Two of those things, we have no control over the deadline. It was election day. This one, we have a little bit more control. Now, I know we are trying to get this done uh, because we do have you know, two colleagues that will not you know, be up here with us, and we want to see some finality to this topic that we've been working on for the last two years. And I especially have to apologize um, to Ms. Johnson because you're, 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 you're terming out and I know that was really, really important to you. And you know, I promise that your input um, as we move forward will, uh, will be very important to me and hopefully you'll answer all my phone calls and text messages in regards to this subject. I'm not comfortable in making a decision today. Um, I think there's a lot more discussion to be had. I don't think I can go into negotiating with any of these um, Proposer, pr proposers, because I don't exactly know yet what the community wants. Can we get close? Are one of these able to negotiate and get close? Or is this not, not the right direction? But I think it's really important what the mayor pointed out. Option five that I've heard of, option five is not that we fund it. That is not an option. We don't have the 20 to $25 million. Um, option five is kind of status quo. Most likely, you know, we'll look for a better, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll look to make improvements in the management. We'll look to make improvements in the funding of the course. Uh, we'll certainly look for those improvements, but there is not option five where we write a $20 million check and make, you know, all of these uh, enhancements. That's not an option. It's kind of status quo for now, because we have a lot of other priorities that include safety and parks and water, and those take priority. So I think that's really important to know. So that's, and I think it's important for my colleagues to know. Um, that's kind of where I stand today. I'm happy to be part of any discussions if we choose uh, to have those discussions, but I, I'd feel more comfortable making this decision with more community input and a little more time. Commissioner Johnson. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Commissioner uh, Boylston. I, um, for those of you who've known me over the past six years, I'd like to thank you for your support Thank you for having a discussion, whether we tended to agree or disagree. And I hope that you know that everything you've ever said to me, I've taken it into account. And sometimes I've had to make a decision that you totally disagreed with. And I hope we can still remain friends. And as the commissioner said, I'm open, whether you um, like how this ends tonight or not. I'm always available. If you have my phone number, fine. If you don't, um, call the city hall. They'll give it to you. I'm always open to discussion as to why, what, why I decided what I did in the past and what I will be doing in the future. That said, I am not one who believes in working hard and not coming to a finality. I heard everything that everyone said. I think all of you recognize that I was there at each of the meetings. I heard each of your comments. I tried to write them down as quickly as I could so that when I got home, I could kind of organize them and say, okay, 10 people were, just, were concerned about the traffic. 10 people were concerned about the largesse of the project. But what I did not hear is that anyone disagreed with the fact that we're going to have a quality 18-hole golf course with whichever uh, project we do decide. And as I said, I'm not one for my favorite term is kicking the can down the road. I think for maybe 20 years, we have neglected this gem 
of a property. And we've also neglected our infrastructure. We've neglected our water treatment plant. We have neglected some of our roads and streets. Why? Because it's a tough, heavy lift to spend taxpayer money. And the mayor has consistently tried to lower the rates, lower the rates. When you lower the rates, hopefully the property values will go up. So you don't necessarily lose, but you also don't maybe have that extra surplus. I don't fight that plan thought. She's been successful at it, and the community loves her for it. I also appreciate, Mayor, you're laying out the scenarios of what we have done and what we've tried to do. I am not in favor of kicking the can down the road, and I don't know if that means we're going to have to have a discussion about it, a vote on it, whatever, but um, I am ready to move forward, and if we don't, our poor dying golf course that's on its last lifeline may not even be there when you're finally ready to decide, yes, we need to do something. Now, as uh, our city manager has said repeatedly, this is not the end of it. Should we choose someone tonight? There's going to be a period of negotiations. And if something's too large, the footprint is too big, you want to try to get that particular person that you chose or, or um, developer that you chose to put in a little more money because I am of the impression that the water wells were not even a part of the consideration. Why that happened, I do not know. I was not a part of creating the uh, proposal, was not in any of the discussions other than what was brought forward here. So, frankly, I didn't quite understand how valuable the understructure of it is until I attended one of the meetings and found out that, as the mayor said, if you touch anything above, you're going to have to do something underneath. Now, to the credit of the developers, if they weren't told that, then how can they bring us back a package that discusses it? So I'm hoping that all of the four that we are discussing tonight, and it's not something we could have gone back to them and said, we need you to give us some numbers or get with our, um, our water um, manager, Mr. Hajimari, I'm sure I butchered his title. Um, so it's something that's in the works. But if we continue to kick that can down the road, let me tell you, it takes forever to get anything done in this city. Trust me, it'll be another 10 years. Our golf course will be nothing but rubble, as it is now, in my opinion. I took a ride around, and I was just frankly dismayed. This is our golf course. This is our gym. I saw no green grass. Maybe it was the time of the year that I was there. But I saw a lot of dirt. I saw a lot of fallen trees. I saw a lot of things in the neighborhoods that were, frankly, something I would not be proud to show you. If I could have had a camera and showed you what I saw, you would be up here saying, if you don't do something today, shame on you. So with that said, I'm ready to continue the discussion. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Vice Mayor? Sure. Um, Mayor, with your opening comments, you kind of uh, jogged something in my memory, mm. and that was from a uh, former president of the Women's League, Mitzi Kitts. Oh, yeah. She would come in here and chastise us quite a bit about how uh, we need to take care of the golf course. So I, I went in my email, and I have an email from 2018 about how we need to make improvements and whatnot. And of course, COVID hit, and we didn't get to it, as you stated. But this has been a discussion that hasn't been occurring for the last six months. This is something that has gone years mm -hmm. in the making. Um, I, I know there's some, some representatives from CBRE. You guys did a great job. Mm -hmm. You guys brought an amazing group of, of, of candidates with some of the best golf architects in the world. We're lucky to have any four of these. Uh, so. I also want to thank Sarah Maxfield. She sent over a, a very helpful poll that was taken. And 340 people did take part in this poll. And of the 340, 339 have played golf there. 
And they said that their priorities are an 18 hole championship golf course, the clubhouse size and amenities, practice area design and, and greens fees. And I think we have four great proposals that address that. The fact is, as Ms. Johnson stated, we can't keep continuing this. It can't be. And, and I, I appreciate some of those uh, that have emailed and have contacted me that stated that we're, we're rushing this, we're in our, uh, putting this in a hurry. That's not the case. This has been discussed multiple times. And I think it's very important that a partner is brought on to not put this burden solely on the taxpayers, as we do have $120 million in bonds that we were voted on and approved. So to me, I'm ready to go forward. Thank you. Vice Mayor? Yeah, I agree with that. And I think the reality of the situation as we sit here today is if we do nothing, nothing is going to happen and for a very long time. So the question is, what can we do that accommodates the needs of the city and the residents? One of these applicants is looking for a 30-year lease, which means we give nothing away. Nothing. We don't give the property away. We retain it. That was one of the biggest concerns I heard was don't give away our green space. And I share that concern because I don't think we don't have enough property. We need to retain every inch of it. The other... Um, you know, the other concern is traffic, and I share that concern, and, and, and a desire for uh, less residential units. And I think the um, applicant who is looking for the land use uh, lease has the lowest number of units of all the applicants. And I'll add to that, additionally, they are putting the most money into the underground work. So there are options do nothing and nothing happens we see the budget we know i mean we're pulling a hundred and sixty thousand dollar boat off the budget because we can't afford it and i see the budget i've studied the budget we all have so if we do nothing you're going to be dealing with the golf course as it is and if we move forward we'll be looking at a new golf course and that's the decision to be made here today Thank you. I have a couple of questions just for, um, uh, maybe it was Matthew. I'm not sure. Let me just see here where my questions are. Um, I don't know why. Okay, so one of the other things that I know we talked about was um, the, the acreage. Mm -hmm. And when we're talking about putting in these different um, developments. Is there a net acreage? Because it, it appears to me that what we're only looking at when we have this public acreage is just the amount along that Atlantic Avenue piece, not taken into consideration what will be returned back to the golf course where the current clubhouse is on, the, on two of these anyway, where, where they're actually going to be building new clubhouses. So my question to you is that, is there a net acreage that you could be showing us out of the 148 acres, giving back the area where the clubhouse is currently, and then taking it from the, what is the net loss in green space? That's important to a lot of people. Correct, correct, yeah, along Atlantic Avenue, you know, the, the numbers we're showing on our slide, those would be the, the gross, the ask from the developers. But the existing clubhouse does mean something, right? And I don't have those numbers offhand, but I want to say it's roughly two acres somewhere in there for the existing clubhouse and the parking lot. So if you factor that in, you know, related seven acres looks to be five and, okay. you know. So, so it's about so two forth. that we would be losing in that one area? I believe so, Because yeah. you also have the driving range and um, areas around there. Just curious, because it feels like it's more, but I could be wrong. Yeah, well, the driving range is still part of the golf course. Yeah, that's still green space. Yeah. yeah. Right. The uh, AM Tower, that I yes. think both of them said they would move, it has one acre of mm. unusable space around it. Okay. And Mayor, on mm -hmm. page, I don't... Page five, mm -hmm. they do have some sort of a. Yeah, breakdown. no, I was looking at that, but that's yeah. that's the total that they would be taking, not the acreage. So, um, well, it says private, and then private is is what we would be giving the the developer if that's how we want to see it. 
yeah. in exchange, and the public would be the golf course, I imagine. Okay. You guys are moving, shifting. <laughs> they like a new layout. We're using okay. the new format. <laughs> All right. Yeah, musical chairs. Nice. I didn't hear the music. I didn't hear it stop there. So, um, okay. And then um, traffic. Traffic is a really important issue. I live over in that area. I understand what everybody's talking about as far as the traffic, especially the backup on, you know, Congress Avenue and, and Atlantic, which obviously that's the very, very close intersection. Um, how will we determine whether or not, and how will we determine on any of these how it's going to affect our traffic? We have not done a traffic study, I presume, on any of these yet, correct? Uh, so th the city hasn't commissioned its own independent traffic study. I know we, that came up in the, in the public the public meetings. Uh, one of the developers, ironically enough, it's the largest development, Mill Creek, did commission their own traffic study. So, you know, realize that it is from a developer. It's still preliminary. It hasn't been validated or approved in any in any way. Um, but at the end of the day, any development that comes forth would need to meet the requirements of the okay. Palm Beach County traffic standards, performance standards. Um, just reading you the facts from what this report says, for the Mill Creek development only, their engineer's estimate was 248 net AM, PM trips and then 274 net afternoon trips. I'm sorry, 248 net AM peak trips and then mm -hmm. 274 in the afternoon. And what was their um, density? Well, I can't remember just offhand, do you know? 650 units. So they were the most dense? Yes. And that's what we would be looking at? Correct. Okay. Yep, yep. Okay, and then I just wanted to also mention, and this has nothing to do with any of the current bidders, but I did a little bit of research because I want the audience and the people in the city of Delray Beach to know, and I'm not blaming anybody, so please don't you know, write up that I'm throwing somebody under the bus. I just wanted to kind of understand, what does it take to run a really good golf course? How much does it cost? We have a $2.9 million outlay at that golf course on an annual basis, and we are just skimming by. We don't have any money going in to be able to save up for vehicles that break down or any kind of major renovations or bathrooms that need to be renovated. Those are the things that are outside of that $2.9 million and correct me if I'm wrong, is that a correct figure? That is correct, Madam okay. Mayor. So, so we're just skating by. Happen to be involved or ha happen to own a home in a, in a country club on the West Coast. So I asked, it looks like, I'm just telling you, like Pebble Beach, okay, in comparison. It's unbelievable. It's super manicured. And so I was thinking, how much does it cost you guys to handle that, you know, to, on a, a per whole basis? What is it? What is your maintenance? $100,000 a hole. It's about half of what we're paying. And this thing, is, this, this course is unbelievable. It's unbelievable in comparison. So I kind of have to ask myself, which is something that a lot, of the, a lot of the audience members asked, where's the money going? Where is the money going? Because it certainly isn't going into that course. And it doesn't look like the one that I'm over, I go over to and play, and it's like pristine. And that's what we should have. That's the way I feel. We should have that course here. Um, so anyway, uh, just wanted to give you an idea as to some of the differences. And again, it could be there's been people have talked to me about our course being so um, not able to come back because the top of the course is gone. So you can't just throw the chemicals in or the you know fertilizers and, and get the green grass and be able to. You can't do that. The whole thing needs to be scraped in order to be able to bring in new nutrients and, and that type of thing to grow the grass. That's my understanding, whether it's true. It's just what I received as far as the reason why. But still, we're putting a tremendous amount of money into that golf course on an annual basis. And what do we got back but just a lot of complaints and people that are very unhappy with the course. But I also feel like we're being asked to stop and push, push us back to not go forward. So I don't know. I mean, it would have been great to have had on that survey, do you want to go forward or you don't? Because that would be an easier question, uh, easier way of me to be able to make a decision here. Um, now, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something, and it, it may or may not be appropriate at this point, but I'll say it. Um, I have had a, a, a look-see over most of these, um, these uh, proposals. And there's one that stands out for me. 
Um, and it is the one with the, with, the, uh, with the Marriott. And let me tell you the reason why. It is the lowest density of all of them, even though it has the Marriott. I don't really take that into consideration as morning and afternoon leaving and coming. The Marriott 128 Keys is a continual all day back and forth. Go to any of the other hotels in the city and you will not find just like in the morning a stack of, of traffic and in the evening like you do when you're going into a, a residential community or coming home um, on one of the larger streets. So to me that actually mixes well with the hundred percent, and this is where it, this is where I could see, taking doing something that would be a little bit different than, than what um, I would normally do, but or say, which is to say that we'll give up some green space, for having one hundred percent of the three hundred and, three hundred and twelve units as being workforce housing. And my thoughts were that if you have, and this is not the high-end workforce housing, this is, the, this is the stuff we were looking for. This is where actually people who are working at the golf course, working at the, at the um, hotel there, they'll actually be able to afford to live there. And so my thoughts are that it kind of works together in that you have units where people can afford to live and also work right there for the, I don't know, they said there was gonna be a thousand or some odd jobs created, I think it was, I'm not sure. I was reading on here somewhere, it was a, it was a very high number of, of jobs being created in that particular one. There you go, okay, thank you. So anyway, so listen, I'm not 100% on board with anything, I just wanted to throw that out to my colleagues to let you know, and this was also the number one from the city, I guess, um, one of the ones that basically came up as, as being um, the, the one that they had thought was best for us. So anything else? Does anybody want to? Yes, finish? I had thought we were discussing whether we were going to go forward or not. Yeah. I did not discuss um, Well, I think choices. if we're going to go forward, then you have to have a choice. Well, not necessarily. We discussed whether we're going to go forward or not. We decided, I think, four of us said we're going to go forward. Now I'd like to discuss which of the four if we yeah. would like. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you meant you were going to hold off on that on another day. No, I was no, going to say, no, you're not no, going to be no, here. No, okay. No, no, All right. No, no. You got it. No, no. All right. I've already, I've already I swallowed it. the cyanide pill. <laughs> and for those, for those who just got an extra one, <laughs> I've got a packet full of them there. We're going to have a cyanide party. Anyhow, I know, I know. <laughs> because I really, I really, let, Go ahead. I'm going to burden myself. I am, if I haven't already, I attended all three of the meetings. Am I creating a? No, it's our network. Our okay. net, we lost Ms. Kors, so okay. we should probably. And so what are we doing here? I think we're waiting for her to come back in now. Question. I don't want to compete. Just give it a second. She'll drop the internet. I feel like it. I'm getting all kind of eyes. Was it the person who was connected in? It was. It just bounced back. doesn't have a limit. All right, there you go. OK, you thank are. you very much. But, um, uh, I listened in t as hard as I could and wrote as fast as I could. Every concern, as I said before, was more about traffic, mm -hmm. um, density, a little about the water once we found out there was water underneath, but not very much. That didn't, cons that didn't appear to affect or bother the um, respondents. And I was just shocked about how many really didn't talk about the golf course. They really didn't care about it. Well, that was the number one, though, honestly. Yeah, in that I'm saying, mm -hmm. but when it came out, I didn't hear a lot of golfers saying, please do something to that golf course or we're going to lose it. So that's my number one. So whatever respondent, responding uh, RFP, that was mine. Whatever they did, I was more concerned about that. Second was, we need a golf club. Mm -hmm. That was my number two. And we have wonderful events that can no longer be held anywhere in anywhere in our city because it's too expensive to go to some of the other hotel 
venues, and we've outgrown the clubhouse. And I specifically talk about the Martin Luther King breakfast. Mm -hmm. It has outgrown our city, and it originated here. It should be here, but we have no place for it. In fact, I believe we're about to outgrow Indian Springs. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we need to bring it back home, and we need a golf club that's going to do it. So I don't want to blur out mine, but those are the things that were important to me. Traffic, no matter who we choose, is going to be impacted. I'm not asking for trips. I know that whatever we do, it's going to impact the traffic. If we decide we're going to do something, traffic is a consideration. And since that seemed to be the number one issue, I would hope that whomever we choose would take that into consideration. The second thing to take into consideration is we have an infrastructure of well water that we need to talk about and discuss and make that important enough to have it brought back and a part of our, our um, their offering to us. Um, that's just about it. Those are my two things. The workforce housing, always good. But if we're going to talk about density, that's going to be important because you're going to have people who are going to be going and coming come and going at peak hours in the morning and in the, after, in the evening. So um, again, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your input. Thank you for your time. Don't go away. It's not over, as Mr. Moore continuously said. But I thank you for indulging me, listening, not being able to give you feedback at that moment. And uh, I'm ready to vote. Did anybody else want to say anything? Uh, sure, I mean, I will. Oh. oh. So I'm going to go back. For those, I think many that are here know, we, we spent hours mm -hmm. uh, a few weeks ago on this. And to me, I wrote on the top of my notes, my priorities were an 18-hole championship golf course and improved clubhouse. Um, when we talk about traffic, I didn't write it down, but I think a key component is the neighborhood doesn't want traffic in their neighborhood anymore. They made that very, very clear. So I, I just have my, the highlights of my notes from the presentation. And the first present presenter was CGHP Development, Hansel Phelps. They stated that they wanted to change the golf course layout, replace all nine wells. They want a hotel. I stated before we heard from anything, I'm just not interested in a hotel there. Um, it's the lowest total revenue to the city, but it's also the least risk to the city. The second presentation was Mill Creek slash Bobby Jones. Well, they started off with Mr. Reese Jones, who designed Torrey Pines, who I think you all know, it might be the nicest public course in the country, if not the world. Uh, they would renovate the existing clubhouse, so it would be, uh, I think, kind of putting Band-Aids on what we have. They have a big re retail component, 8,000 square foot retail. Uh, they have a range with Top Tracer, I think 30 covered tea stations, that was very exciting as well. Then the third propo uh, proposer was Heatherwood. They brought in their architect, a guy, gentleman named Tyler Ray, mm -hmm. who's unbelievable too. He might be, uh, he's restored over 30 Donald Ross courses, and I think that's important to many people. They have no Florida experiences, very low density. They have from my notes, two entrances through the communities. I think that mm -hmm. isn't a good thing. Um, they proposed adding water hazards to the course, and they stated they want to bring the country club lifestyle to the public. And the last presenter was related. Well, they have a gentleman by Jack Nicholas who's proposing to design it. To me, and I know Ms. Johnson stated it, and I agree with her, the clubhouse is crucial, and to me, what they're proposing for the clubhouse was the best, uh, 25,000 square feet off of Atlantic Avenue. So the entrance would be off of West Atlantic Avenue instead of the communities, which I think the community has spoken that that's what they'd like to see. The Nicholas Group has done 435 golf courses worldwide, a top tracer and entertainment driving range, which I think is very important for young people uh, that 
are trying to enter the sport and may not want to play nine or 18 holes, but they like going to Top Golf. This wouldn't be a Top Golf thing, but it'd be kind of a, a smaller version. Iconic clubhouse for the city. Uh, financials was 25 million for seven acres. So they're asking for the smallest number of acres, seven acres. Zero hotel, and I think what really stood out to me for city residents. 75% discount for city residents. The average price per round is $27, but it would range from $14 off season, $35 in season. So I don't know if we're, we're giving choices now or how, how you want to do that, but question about those that. are my highlights. Yep. My, my question to you, though, about yeah. that, that's con a little odd bring to your, me. Bring your microphone to I'm you. sorry, when you look at related group and they talk yeah. about their golf operations revenue, it's over a million dollars. And the other applicants are all in the two, 235, 188, $228,000 range. How are they making $800,000 more in operational revenue and going to keep the fees low? Yeah, I, listen. That, that would, doesn't make any mathematical sense. I think the gentleman can answer that better than me. Thank well, you. I mean, there was a gentleman on the line that was uh, Shane, that was the financial guy. He might be able to answer it, and we, w we definitely need to know that. But more importantly, at the last meeting, we were told that there wasn't the agreement with that particular group that was going to run the, the, the um, operations. So how, how are they giving a revenue? How can you promise something that you don't even have any control over if you're not running it? That was the question that I had. Oh, okay, sorry. It doesn't make any se sense to me. I do have, to that point, I have in my notes, we would do a separate RFP for course right, but, operator. Right, I understand, but, but I don't think that until they get to that point, they would know what the income would be. It seems very or the, the cart before the horse. And to oh. me, that's bait that yeah. I, you know, because if it doesn't, if it doesn't come to fruition, who is the, who is the community going to blame for that? Right up here. Right up here. Don't blame us, anyways. But, well, but yeah. what I'm trying to say is that you know I don't know that that's realistic well, because you, you know to, just to answer, and yes. I have no idea. You gentlemen know better than me. But if you have a clubhouse of that size and you're having more events and more lunches and and more things, they're probably taking that into consideration. But I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just jump in. One of the things that I think that we need to take into consideration, especially after looking at the surveys, um, you know, I look at the two proposals that um, take seven to 10 acres, which is, you know, five, six, seven, you know, like 5% of, of the total acreage, and, um, and do give us a new uh, clubhouse, mm -hmm. expanded clubhouse. And Ms. Ms. Johnson, you're absolutely right. It's not just the Martin Luther King breakfast. If the Opal can't house the event, for one of our nonprofits or for one of our for profits, or sometimes doesn't, if they are not able to donate it, um, then it leaves our city. Yeah. The library just had to have an event under a tent at a, resi at, at, at a residence house um, because there are no options. We have no place. Um, so I think you know, that is essential. And two of, the, two of the proposals give us those options. The big thing for me, though, is after looking at all the feedback and the concern of traffic, not a surprise. Um, is that one of them, the related group, only has residential. Um, and if you look at our traffic around our city, it has a lot to do with, if you go to Linton, it has a lot to do with the grocery stores and the retail and the commerce. And if you go on Atlantic Avenue, it obviously has a lot to do with the entertainment, the, the, the restaurants and everything we have to offer there. Theirs would only be residential traffic. In the case of um, Phelps, theirs has residential, but then it also has retail. Which is, going to provide, which is going to create a lot of traffic. It also has a hotel, which will create traffic. Both the retail and the hotel will have staff, which the related group won't have staff for their retail or for their hotel because they don't have it. And what really concerns me is when this is a success and everybody wants to be there and the hotel is holding a conference on a Friday night, which is the same night someone's getting married at our clubhouse, <laughs> which is the same time that the restaurant is packed because it's a Friday night, what does the traffic look like then? That's why that project <coughs> concerns me. May I ask, could we um, explain, or just even for my benefit, to just to be clear, I want to make sure I'm 100% clear, with the, the CGHP, 
Hensel Phillips, we are not giving away any land, correct? Unless at the conclusion of the 30 years, we decide to sell it at full value. Is that correct? Correct. Leanne, do you want to add anything to that? Is no, I don't have anything to add to that. Um, it, that is the lease structure. You're correct about that. Okay. Thank you very much. See, Ms. Johnson, if I'm, and, and Mr. Frankel, bottom line is we shouldn't be giving away taxpayer land if we don't have to. And this could get us to where we want to go for the residents. They are making a compromise because they're not interested in additional apartments, and I understand that. But it's the lowest units. It's endorsed by the Donald Ross Foundation. It's got a strong labor plan. It's got that interesting range that sounds pretty cool. And it's also not giving away one square foot of our taxpayer's property which we really shouldn't be doing. We don't have property to give away. We can't afford to give it away. And at the end of 30 years, if the residents say we want to sell it for value, it will be very valuable at that point in time, then they can make that determination. May I respond? Sure. OK, I look at page 5. And if you look at the private, the public-private acreage, I look at the footprint. Related has the smallest footprint, if you uh, appreciate these numbers, trust these numbers. And I would hate to say, uh, Deputy Vice Mayor, in 5 to 10, 15 years, they're probably going to sell it. It's going to be the trend, because the city has not been able to maintain the golf course. Hey, wait a second. We're sell I think what? you're on sell a related, the, but I'm not talking about, I'm talking about um, C, G, H, P. I know you H, are. P. You said it's our choice, and if we decide that we can sell it or keep no, it. No, no. In 30 years, you have the option, but the I understand is, that. Oh, you I'm, own, you, the residents retain ownership of their I, property, and I this understand. is the only, this is the only applicant that allows the residents to retain their property. And Otherwise, we're giving away taxpayer <coughs> property, and I'm not comfortable with that. Yeah, we're not well. giving. Just, just, just to correct it, we're not giving. We're exchanging it. Exchanging, right? We're exchanging. For correct. Tens of millions of dollars. We're not. Well, in giving. some instances, no, no, yes, in others, no. I just think it's important that we're I don't not, know. We're not giving away. We're not giving we're away not giving land. It's just the you know, applicant that is allowing us to retain the ownership is offering to do the most underground work. Yeah, no, I, I agree with all the points you made. I just I've heard that now three times that we're giving away land. We're not giving away well, land. Well, that's what the residents believe in all those emails we receive. And I think the main issue that the residents have is they don't want the green space developed. It's not so much about the... Well, that would the, be 100% of all the unit, the, the things then, yeah. Okay. But that's that's the real concern. It, it, to say, and like, they're oh, getting well, no we're golf course. To it and 30 years later, we're going to have some flexibility. That Most of the individuals I've spoken to that's not going to make them feel any better. They don't want the green space developed. Period. Well, and, then and, they're, and, they're, and granted, that's how a P3 works. Of course. Right? We don't, in the P3, we're not the ones that come with the checkbook. We're usually the ones that come with the asset. They and right? receive the benefits. It, exactly. So it's a win-win in my, my book, whichever one we choose. But I appreciate your. So again, let's just go back to the infrastructure part of it. I think it's important to point out. The infrastructure out. is one of the most important things. If someone comes in and they fix and the golf course and we don't fix it the place underneath. It wasn't a part of the, as far as I understand, was it a part? Was the water wells consideration yes. a part of the, yes. of the proposal? Absolutely. It was, Leanne, do you want to respond to the specifics on the RFP, what, what that contained? Yeah, I'm looking at page four of the RFP that was issued, and it does say um, the project must include infrastructure improvements, including but not limited to drainage, recirculation, raw water wells and transmission line, water main, irrigation system, and then it goes on to list parking lot repairs and some other things. So the RFP um, certainly did contemplate the wells. And, and but, can I can I point she, out just did she just say but not related to? Does that mean if I'm going to do a proposal? No, not limited. Not limited. Oh, sorry, to. not limited. Not limited to. to. Okay. Okay. And so right. let's go back to the golf improvements because um, if I'm understanding this correctly. Um, 
Is this the figure that we would be looking at that differentiates what kind of money is going into the infrastructure? Would would be on page 10 of my little pamphlet, capital budget, golf improvements. You have 23 million for the Bobby Jones. You have 33 million for Hansel Phillips. You have 21 million for Heatherwood, and you have related being uh, 19 million. Related is the lowest, and that would include your golf course, your uh, your clubhouse, your infrastructure, everything that would they would be putting into it for the public. Correct. There's a huge yes, difference. Okay. There's a huge difference between the related. And the and the and the um, and the Hansel and and the reason for that more than likely is the fact that when we were hearing the presentations, Hansel uh, Phillips was doing all of it, whereas related was like well there was a well or two that they may do and then some other substructure. That's what I understood. Right. Uh, just one clarification though on related, they're they're the value that you see there that nineteen point eight million. That's mm -hmm. the golf course improvement number. Okay. They're public invest their public proffer was 25 million in total so i think there was a there was a five million dollar check essentially that was being written to the city uh, that, that would be that you you could use okay so see. their total investment then is um 25 million you're saying correct shane okay. is that how you see it? It, it uh related group was for 25 million Thank you. uh they would use that money for the public improvements and then anything re remaining would be released to the city, and they estimated of that there um, would be about 5.2 million remains. So the 19.8 was for all their public improvement estimates. Okay, so that was that just the way that they were doing it for related? Everybody else, it's that's the entire investment, or am I missing what they would be handing back in some of these other ones as well? So in other related words, I got, was the only. Oh, go ahead, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Related was the only one that said. There's another $5.2 million city. You can use that for what you want. Okay. So related to total investment is 25 million. Mm -hmm. They just specified that their course improvements or public improvements would be 19.8. And then the city can use the other 5.2 at your discretion. Got it. Thank so you. that would be the golf course. I'm sorry, the golf course and the clubhouse. Is that? No, that 5.2, then you can. No, no, no I meant the, the amount oh, that yes, they, yes. yes. The 19. Okay, I, I, my, I, my questions are answered. If there's no others, I don't know if there's anybody else that has any further questions or concerns. Um, we can entertain a motion if we'd like to make one. If anybody would. I'd like to make a motion that we award the, can I say it that way? That we make the award to a related group? Well, negotiate, I would say. And with neg negotiations, et cetera, whatever the process is. Do we have a second? Second for the city attorney to discuss. So essentially what you would be doing is you would direct staff to negotiate with related and bring forth an agreement that would come back to the city for approval. Can you walk me through that um, negotiation process? Like, are, are there any details that you're looking to add to that well, negotiation? Well, I think they've heard us. And if they want to come to a happy <laughs> conclusion with the others waiting in the wings, they know what we're after. I don't, I don't, I can't put any more into it. So we have to be careful, right? So they've mm -hmm. given you the proposal. Mm -hmm. And while you can't, you have the ability to take away from the pro proposal, you can't really add to it. Okay. And so we're not going to be negotiating, you know, for example, you know, adding uh, additional buildings or something. Not that that's what you're interested in, but do you see what I'm saying? So. If they're proposing 600 units, we can take away. Mm -hmm. We can, you know, say, well, no, we're interested in 300 or 400. Mm -hmm. But of course, remember, there, there's a give and take, give right? And take. So that's what the negotiation is going to is going to entail. But we're not going to be adding things specifically when we talk about the density. The the community spoken. The less dense the project, the probably the less profit they'll get. I don't know what the give and take is, but the less density, then the less traffic. So it's it's not adding. We're going to be taking away if that's what they choose to do. Right. But we just we really just can't be redesigning no. it. No. OK, so anyone else? Call the, call the roll, please. Mr. Boston? No. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mayor Petrolia? No. Mr. Frankel? Yes. Ms. Cassell? No. Any other thoughts, 
Um, I'll entertain a motion for the uh, Hansel Phelps. So you'll make a motion? Motion, yep. I'll make it and entertain it. <laughs> <laughs> do both. You need a second? Yes, I do. Do we have a second? No. Nope. Okay. I'll, I'll pass. Well, no, I won't. Just it won't pass work. anyway. So no. nothing's going to happen on the golf course. Okay. Any other, any other ideas? Motion. You want to make a motion to table it? I mean, you were thinking about that doing to begin with, but I mean, I think I, that I, that's we, what I was going to do. Um, well, I understand, but you know, we're here, and I think I that I first wanted to see yeah. if yeah, if anything moved forward. Um, but now I, I I would I would like to. Um, do I have to do date certain? No. No. You I mean you can do table it. I don't, I don't want to do date certain because there's issues right on that right now. Um, not that this is, requires public notice, but you can table it for a workshop. You can table it for further discussion, you know, as a regular agenda item in the next two to three months. Um, I think you would want to give your new colleagues time to yep. get up to speed and meet with staff and do, with the, do the homework that they need before. So, um, you know, it's really your pleasure if you want a workshop or if you want a actual agenda item to Sure. basically reconsider no, I think it I think at the very least it needs to be work um, workshop um, especially with the addition of the um, two new co colleagues of mine so I, I will make a motion to table this to date uncertain um, to a future workshop okay may I add do we have a second is, no I well, we can't well it won't make a difference a I, okay I won't have need a second comment. Yeah, we need a second. Second for Commissioner Johnson to discuss. Thank you. I, it's been a pleasure trying to get this down the road a little bit further. I uh, thank everyone for allowing me that opportunity. i just like to say once we do this vote, it's going to be clock ticking, and I would like to say if anybody ever wants to come to Delray to do business in the future, they're going to have second thoughts about it. I do. I just. I, I want to say one thing. We have to be mindful of that because we're tabling this now. Where the cone of silence is in effect, mm -hmm. and so we have to be mindful. And I'll explain it to your new colleagues that we're not, you know, having out of the sunshine conversations with anybody who's involved in one of the proposals. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the second. Ooh. I seconded. Second it. Seconded for okay. discussion. Ms. Johnson. No. Mayor Petrolia. Yes. Mr. Frankel? No. Ms. Cassell. What happens if we say no? I mean, we'll we no have to go we'll back and just keep talking. Just, just talking, talking in circles? No, or? there's something we can do. Okay, then I'll say no and see what that is. That's a surprise, I guess. <laughs> Sorry, forgive me. And Mr. Bolston. Yes. So the, okay, the so what can we do? I, I mean, at this point, all you can do is just reject all proposals. I mean, there's really... Oh, God. I mean, either we have another discussion. And then what happens if all, that's, how much money have the taxpayers invested in this process, if you don't mind me asking? Should we not choose one today? I think no, they I, should I know that. I would just that. like to know, yeah. I think CBRE is on a retainer. I'm not sure what that retainer amount is. They could probably tell us what's your, yeah. what's your invoice year to it's date. About, it's approximately 7000 a month. For the last 12 months? For about 11 months, yes, ma'am. I'll just I'll just say that if we're able to take some some additional time, like I like I said, those other decisions had a firm deadline. They had an election date. This one doesn't. The fact that we made two motions that were negotiate to negotiate with no specifics on what we were negotiating that worries me. When we make a motion months from now, um, if we do. Then they'd have specifics on what we would want to negotiate, the intensity of a, of a project or the inclusion of a hotel or, or the amount of retail space for traffic considerations. But neither of those motions took into account anything like that to include in the negotiations. It said just go negotiate. Make a motion. Um, so that's what I, I, I'm not prepared to put any of that in negotiation without having more time with the public. And so that's why I'm asking to table it. Okay. Uh, can I make a motion to reconsider the last vote? <laughs> Second. Okay. So the vote on the, the, the last reconsideration the is reconsideration for Mr. Boylston's motion to uh, table. Table. Okay. Call the roll, please. Mayor Petrolia. Yes. Mr. Frankel. Yes. Ms. Cassell. Yes. Mr. Boylston. Yes. Ms. Johnson. No. 
Because you need to make as much money. All right, yeah, so, well, no. We will be we doing this all over again. Correct. Now we've now you can, so. you've reconsidered it, so now you need a motion to right, right. table it. To. Absolutely. All right, so I have a couple of other things, topics I wanted to talk with my colleagues about. No? Go ahead. I know. Thank you, gentlemen, for your hard work. Thank you. And all your time. You. I just want to be clear. Here. All right, hold on just a minute. Let these guys get out. Do we have to vote? I don't know. We're going to wait let these guys move out. She's going to tell us what we can and can't do here. So if everybody can take their conversations into the lobby so that we can go ahead and continue, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay, so okay, so now we need a motion to um, table it until we have a workshop. Okay. Um, so moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Frankel. Yes. Ms. Cassell. Sure. Mr. Boylston. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mayor Petrolia. Yes. All right. So let me just um, bring. Oh, did you want to speak? No, I was just. A simple comment that we'll arrange a date specific and we'll offer advice and recommendations in that regard soon so that we can continue the consideration process. Thank you. Okay, so there was a couple of things I wanted to bring up. Number one, I uh, just wanted to make sure my colleagues are okay. We're working on a proclamation for a, I think it's 90th year um, for the FAU. Um, they've asked for all the surrounding towns to give them a proclamation, which we're, uh, I'm okay, I think we're okay with unless... That's fine. That would be 60 years, I believe. 60 years. I'm sorry. Yes, that's right. That's right. It has to be six years. My dad worked on the grounds there when I was a kid, so it has to be six years. Um, so um, anyway, so they've asked us to do that. And then the second thing is, is if we end up with a winner, winner, chicken dinner down there, I think we should do something really special for them as well. Um, oh, you know, they're going to be course. playing in these the Yay. final four, and Go then we're going to go to the finals. So I'm kind of excited about that. The other thing I wanted to bring up, and we, this is something that we still we, have two other items. Oh, do we? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I don't want to interrupt, but I didn't even see that. I'm just looking at my front page. I am so sorry. The last time I looked, there was. I apologize. I didn't even know. Okay, so excuse me. All right, so um, we have we have the uh, re resolution number 65-23. So this is um, a retroactive bid waiver um, for the management of the golf course. Right now, um, we need to have a retroactive approval because the management agreement expired. Right. We were in the middle of a solicitation, which we canceled because we were concerned about the bids we were going to get. Um, this is for one year. However, if you felt more comfortable doing less time, you know, I, because of the uncertainty of what's going to happen after we table it, I'm going to leave it up to you. Um, but you know, at some point, we do need to get direction as to whether or not we're going to move forward with a formal solicitation. The concern from staff is that if people know that we're going to potentially um, enter into a P3 agreement, they may not want to spend the resources to have a short-term agreement to manage the golf course. And so that's why we're kind of in limbo. But at a minimum, we need to get an agreement in place. So Lynn, um, the question I have for you is we have a 30-day out with this contract? We always have a termination. Okay, so we can terminate without cause, giving them the notice in the event. The second thing that I am concerned about with respect to this is that if we do do less than a year, um, it sends a signal to all of the people who are also working there that might start looking for other jobs, and then all of a sudden we don't have staff. So I'm okay with this, but I just want to make sure that we can get out of it if we need to, if we're changing, shifting, and going in a different direction. Yes, ma'am. Anything else? Motion to approve. Second. All right, call the roll, please. Mr. Frankel. Yes. Ms. Cassell. Yes. Mr. Boylston. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Petrolia. Yes. yes. And then finally, we have resolution 57 23. This is to order an agreement with parking, uh, One Parking LLC. They have a very short presentation if you're interested. Yes. Since our last meeting, uh, we did bring this before the Parking Management Advisory Board um, as directed by the, well, not directed, but suggested by the commission. Um, and I think they uh, received, they were favor favorable to it. The Parking Advisory Board was favorable? They were, that's correct. 
I'm, I'm looking out at the board heads. and they're saying they're not. That wasn't what I was, the information I received. Gentlemen's at okay, the podium. Can we, okay, well, let's go ahead and whatever. do our presentation. We can have the conversation afterwards. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. This one goes forward. I think everybody left. Okay, thank this. you. They didn't see this. No. So I understand I have about three minutes on this. If I'm wrong about that, someone go ahead and tell me. Three minutes? But That's, it's not public comment. I know. No. He was told three minutes, no. but hopefully we can not use okay. ten. I can linger. I can come back if you'd like <laughs> on anything. Our company, we're 20 years in business just up the road in West Palm Beach. We have 100 plus locations in 14 different markets. Our biggest markets are West Palm Beach, Chicago, okay, we're not <clears throat> Washington, D.C., and New York City. You see on the screen 26 different municipalities that we have experience in, in uh, within our company and our team. If my team would stand up, please. One of the advantages I believe we bring is that nobody flew in here tonight. Everybody's just 22 minutes up the road. It took me 22 minutes to get here today. I timed it. So we're very close. We're your neighbors. We have Kirsten Dolan founded the company with her late husband, Greg Sussex. She remains the CEO and, uh, and our leader. Myself as the president, John G. Aquinti and Jenny are both sitting in the audience. Mike Tootin and Chris Hall will be our on the, boots on the ground project manager on a daily basis and Zach is in our corporate office as a business analyst. <clears throat> How will we do this? The people, the technology, and the financials. We have in the proposal given to city staff a general manager, a project manager, regional manager allocation, meter enforcement, event personnel, office collection administrators, technicians to handle your on-street devices and porters to keep the garages clean. In general, we have an enforcement shift from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. then shift two from 4 p.m. to 12. We have a meter technician on the street to handle your 79 meters when they're broken, et cetera, et cetera. And we have garage porters, as mentioned. The technology we'll use is, runs a gamut from PCI, DSS compliance, EV charge stations, smart stations that will text the person at the uh, EV charge station and tell them their car is finished being charged, come get your car and move it so someone else can use it. I could spend a long time on this slide alone. I'm gonna kinda go through it and I can come back to it if you'd like. Sometimes a crude drawing says a million words. This is my drawing when I was thinking about trying to explain how the LPR technology that we will use on surface lots and in the garage is how it works. But in general, if you look over on the lower left-hand corner, you have a car coming in, two LPR cameras captured that that car entered at 5.30 p.m., license plate ABC123. That information goes to the tech cloud, and the cloud asks, was a payment made by phone for the $5 that is due? Was a payment made to the T2 Luke? And that's the device you walk up to on the streets and in the garages. If that answer is no for both of those, a citation is issued. And that's just about it. That's very rudimentary and very simple, but I think it gets a message across of LPR, license plate recognition, and how that can work. The cameras kick on after, what is it, four o'clock? After four o'clock when people are supposed to start paying in the garages, and the cameras are on on the surface lots uh, the entire time people are supposed to start paying. In addition, uh, when we presented to city staff, we had a fully electric GEM, GEM vehicle on which we would mount the camera that you see on the far left and we drive the streets looking for cars, looking for uh, license plates, and it's the same process as I just showed on the picture, right? Except the LPR cameras I've depicted here are mobile, mounted atop, in this case, a Chevy Bolt. The gem that I had talked about in the previous presentations doesn't have the amps necessary to run the cameras, the computer, the printer, and everything that would be contained within the vehicle. Then the small item you see above the plus sign 
is a simple handheld that can do the same functions as the Genetec camera that's mounted on top of the Chevy Bolt. Mm. Not real visible. This is our full budget for 12 months and stretching out five years. And in the budget, we have everything from the payroll to the liability insurance to uniforms to miscellaneous. We, uh, in general, have proposed, a, if we break this down into the three major categories that we seem to be discussing over the six month of this process, we have a management fee in year one of 54,000, operating expenses in year one of 775-ish, and then amortization of 22,000. The amortization is for the purchase of these um, things. The enforcement tech is what drives the Genetec camera and tells us if the car that we're looking at has paid via a cell phone or via the T2 Luke. All this takes place in the cloud. The Chevy Bolts now take the place of the gems, uh, which don't have sufficient uh, amps to, to power what we need to have powered. And then uh, small amount of office furniture, desks and chairs that we need to bring to the office. Citation revenue <clears throat> in general, and this is not intended to be the final, this is intended to be an example. We take our marching orders from the city. If the city decides they want a citation of, of six dollars, and that's eventually what we send, but there has to be a convenience fee, which is in our proposal a push to the parking customer and the, and the citation would be $39.99 if paid in 14 days. If paid after, let's say it jumps to $60 with the convenience fee, $64.99. The division of funds is such that $39.99 is received, $4.99 goes to tech and another $5 goes to tech. And by tech, I mean the cameras, the infrastructure, the people to chase the tickets and citations, the credit card charges associated with taking the payments, turnkey, everything associated with citations comes out of the $4.99 and $5 tech fees. I'm, I'm not going to let this linger too much. Uh, this is the Pompano Beach snapshot. This is just showing that before we took the contract um, 2019, not COVID uh, uh, impacted. There were 6,400 transactions. And last year we did 14,000 and revenue for that city has more than doubled. I'm gonna skip off that and, and leave this, but quickly mention that I think we've done a good job in Pompano Beach, but it would be disingenuous of me to stand up here and say that we drove all that. Pompano Beach has added restaurants and, and the pier and many things to attract people. We're just controlling the money a bit better. We're issuing more citations. I think we've brought um, some of that improvement to the table, but I don't want to claim it all. Then why one parking? Uh, financial proposal. Successful execution of staffing efficiencies through technology. We strike a balance of people and tech. We improve typically the capture of violators and we process efficiencies resulting in significant financial improvement. We have the municipal experience uh, that I've illustrated. Uh, executives collaborated with cities for over 35 years. Myself, I've been doing parking for 40 years now and, and most of those cities that I showed, I've worked in. I've been in 48 different markets in the 40 years that I've been doing parking. Um, City of Pompano Beach just showed the results. We understand municipal expectation levels and key staff with over 15 years of experience. Myself and, and Kirsten alone can, can claim 70 to 75 years of experience in parking. That, uh, tech thought leaders, if you, um, if you come out of a parking garage today, you, you usually don't see cashiers. You usually don't see people. In 1999, I could see this headed in that direction. 
So I filed patents for a process of melding two-way audio video into parking devices. And today, that technology is in thousands of locations. So I've been around tech and parking a bit myself. And then we take advantage of some of the best tech that's offered within our industry. We have real-time occupancy reporting. We have sensors we can put in spaces to tell your constituents where a space is open and where a space is not. That the cost, the capex of that is not in our proposal, but we can certainly get it done if you decided you wanted to go that route. Aggregate the best of tech. Then local advantage, again, we're just up the street. We have 24-7 response. It's not unusual for our client in Pompano to call me in the morning and I'm there having lunch to talk about the issues we have going on in Pompano. 100 plus employees, just 25 minutes away in Palm Beach, community partnerships, the Lord's Place, March of Dimes, Families First of Palm Beach County, and the Florida Restaurant and Lodging. And again, the most valuable resource we have is sitting right here in the audience with me. Okay, with that, I, I certainly didn't make three minutes, but I, I didn't go on forever. And I'm open for any questions. Well, yes, sir. Madam Mayor, for good measure, I think it would be appropriate to enable Cynthia Busan, who is representing the Department of Public Works regarding this matter this evening, to share with the commission the experience relative to the parking management advisory group. Great. Come on up. So that that is clearly understood because there's some contradictions haven't been experienced this evening but to be clear please great thank you Cynthia Busan I'm the assistant director of public works um, last week at the PMAP parking management board the one parking representatives did show up and we gave a little bit longer of the same presentation um, and explained to the parking management board what the things that we're looking forward to and how the solicitation process worked and allowed them the opportunity for some some healthy interaction as to questions and answers so that they could feel more comfortable with how we're moving forward. Thank you, ma'am. Sure. Don't go anywhere. Okay. <laughs> I want to ask some questions first. Um, is there anybody else that you wanted to bring up? Or are you good? All right, to the commission then. Did you want to start? Oh, yes. Sure. First of all, this is a change. I'm, I'm a little confused. The, the parking board put out a bid or no, the city solicitation did. or it's a city solicitation. Solic city solicitation, and one parking was the only. No, the city received um, five submittals, and then there was a selection committee of city staff, and they went through the the usual process of ranking the firms. One parking, um, they ranked the firms, and then they had presentations, and from a result of those two activities, one parking was the uh, selected vendor and then the city entered into negotiations with that vendor is that the way it works pretty much so why are we looking at it hmm? why are we looking at it well um, I'm, I'm confused if if they've already awarded it yeah. no we yeah, haven't they've this chosen it so we and did now a we have to so we have to agree we're just rubber stamping what the parking we're management approving the board agreement. No, no, this has nothing to do with the Parking Management Board. So the okay. city staff sat on a selection committee and an evaluation committee. They reviewed the proposals. They heard presentations. They ranked the proposals. This is who they suggested as being the best um, proposal for the city commission to consider. And today we have the agreement for your consideration and approval. The Parking Management Advisory Group was a courtesy based on suggestions having been offered at a previous meeting. So the Department of Public Works and everyone else involved responded to says suggestion and therefore offered an opportunity last week to discuss and engage can we ask the board to step forward and, and so to, just so we're clear so you know the parking advisory board um gives policy um suggestions recommendations to the city commission so it's our understanding that i guess in the past they may have participated in this process which is really you know, from a legal perspective, you always have to be careful with having non-city staff members sitting on an evaluation committee because there's certain rules and processes that have to be followed, and that's why we encourage staff who are truly the subject matter experts. So the purview of the Parking Management Board is not to approve these agreements, right? They're no, to no, make we understand that, but um, they're shaking their heads during the conversation, and I'm getting just curious what their opinion is. I mean, it's your purview if you want to open it up to bring public it in. comment. Please, but. thank you. 
Someone from present. the board want to come speak? Sure. Thank you. How are you? Good, good. Aaron Hollyberg, Park and Management Board. Um, my concern was I don't see how they change anything that Lanier is not already doing because y'all control the parking, right? Y'all control the rates. They make their money off, after talking to them, they make their money off of the garages, of the convenience fee. We don't fill the garages. So we're going to bring in a new company, pay, more, pay money to them. In all actuality, y'all are the ones who decide what goes on. So by getting a new company, it's not changing anything that I understand. Does that make sense? And sort that's, of, that's yeah. that was my part of the puzzle. Yeah. That, yeah. that was that was my confusion. It's it, there's just something didn't happen here that happens in the previous ones. Um, number one was there's the problem with the previous one. Um, we were open for it. It was their contract was up and it was time to rebid. Um, it was time to do a new solicitation. So staff reviewed the proposals, heard the presentations, and ranked them. So there is a ranking process, which I know you've engaged in that, especially through your CRA roles. So staff engaged in that process and ranked them. One parking was the best proposal for what maybe it was a point system. I don't, I'm not. I wasn't there. And so then staff negotiates an agreement, which is what we bring forward to you. I think you, Cynthia can come forward and, and provide you insight as to what's different and why perhaps. Yes, staff I would. Chose I would like to hear that, especially if the parking management board representative is now saying what's the difference between the two I maybe what he's we saying need to is that other things have to be addressed not just the management just um, and the widgets sure. part well, I'm, the manage we have a parking management problem we don't have parking spots that don't exist we have a parking management problem their convenience fee when I talked to this spoke to them afterwards because I was trying to let them know if you're trying to make your income off of the garages we don't fill the garages mm. so why are we getting rid of one company to take on another company if we still have the same issue? Especially if they cost more. And we already have the widgets for the occupancy of the garages. I don't, I was going to ask if we have notification for the various parking spaces on the street, if that's something new. Right. An app or something, that would be nice. But, uh, okay. no, I'm glad you bring that up. That's, that's actually when they present, when these different firms, um, present to city staff, they present different technologies that they have available that would help us do better in the future, whether it's collecting more revenue or collecting more citations. And one parking actually submitted that they're going to um, introduce 30 more license plate readers throughout our corridor. So that should pick up additional citations that um, additional parking citations that aren't presently being picked up today. This company, you said one. This company, One Parking, has proposed to install 30 additional LPRs. So our revenue should increase from that. And then additionally, they've offered to assist the city in implementing different strategies from the parking and uh, curbside management plan. So there, there are um, technology options, as, as he was alluding to, that could help us do better on, on collection. One of the, just to toss out um, one of the ones that comes off of hand is um, being able to see online real time where parking spaces are available and that technology exists and they've implemented it in other places so if that's something the city's interested in implementing you know that's something we could we could bring forward if I may what is the cost that we the contract we were uh, does the difference in the cost is this considerably more because we expect to get greater revenues I apologize I'm going to be very frank with you I did not even realize this item was on here either. and I did not look at the backup I thought we had one item because that's what we I'm my my fault my apology I'm saying that honestly but what I'd like to know is um, the is this an, a substantial increase from what we were paying before if so does do you expect that it compensates for itself and with this new technology and, and greater citation ability. Right. No, that's a great question. It's actually going to be a decrease, okay. um, at least for the first year. All right. And then the, it goes up in future years. So at one point, it will be higher than the than the current rate, but it's still lower than um, our current proposer had submitted on. What's the contract? 
period? The contract period is for three years, okay. and then I put, proposed an additional two. Do you know what the revenue is for our parking revenue right now? I mean, this is going to be an $866,000 per year contract. Yep. And so I want to know what that's bringing in as far as revenue. Off the top of my head, I believe it's... it's so, Dunkley, I think you're qualified to address that question. Yes, good afternoon, Mayor. The revenue is $3.6 million in parking revenue, and then an additional 930000 in citation revenue. Annually. So it's almost a wash with respect to the uh, this ticketing versus right. people putting in the money. I mean, obviously, if you're not going to have ticketing, they're not going to put the money in anyway. So, you know, you have to have one and, and not without the other. But um, so, you know, I mean, I, I, I hate tickets. You know, we used to be a different city here when I first started. There was a little guy in a golf cart that used to go volunteer. around and used to walk. volunteer with the, with the chalk. and chalk on the back of the car absolutely and 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 honestly it was a much softer town and yeah. then we had my pre predecessor the, the person who preceded me in this position that saw this as Revenue. monetizing and the truth of the matter is is yes it does and any other city that i go into we do pay parking to parking meters i get it and i know that that was the hard thing for a lot of people to swallow. It still is for me. I just don't want a predatory type of a, you know, situation. When somebody's coming up here and telling me how much, mo how many more tickets they put out there, I want to pull my hair out because you know who gets those calls? Yes. Right here, and people are upset and they're never coming back to our town, and it gives us a bad reputation. You know, it's just it's one of those things where I'm not looking to try to make you know, a bigger score. I want people to come here and have a great experience, experience and walk happy. away happy, not like uncomfortable because they just spent $200 in a restaurant and now they've got a $35 parking ticket. I just I hate that. Yes, I, I was still trying to question when uh, mm -hmm. Deputy Vice Mayor um, injected her question. In Pompano Beach, how long have you been the Parking. There we go. Company. Uh, going on two years. Two years. Right. So you may not be able to answer this one off the top of your head. How many complaints? Because I presume they went from some other company to you, and the parking fees, etc., citation fees went mm -hmm. up. No, no. The number of citation issued went up, but the parking uh, citation cost did not. Right, and again, you have that control. If you want to cut citation fees in half, you can do it. We still enforce. I, I just say that yeah. what we do encourages turn do of you? the spaces. Otherwise, you can park in that space for a week, and there's no repercussions. If you want more and more people visiting your beach, beaches, then you encourage the turn of the cars and allow two or three people to park in one space. It's always been the, the desire to turn right. over. And That's how you do it, is with but, the technology. But just one more question. Do you happen to know the complaint number, or is that a city, they come to the city, not to you? No, they come to us. They come. Uh, do you know how many? Um, how Mike, do past, you have any idea? Past oh, yeah. year of last three months, or COVID. Come on up, come on up and say your name. Yeah. Come to the microphone, difficult. please. Mike runs the city of Pompano Beach for us and would also be involved in this operation. Okay, yeah. thank you. So, Hello, Mike oh, Tootin, One Parking. Look, hold on, go ahead. Okay, let, Michael let Tootin, have the moment. One Parking. Um, so on, on average, the, the complaints do come directly to us. They, they come either by phone or they walk right in <clears throat> the building to our desk. Uh, and I would say, just to throw an average, on average, I would say we get two to three a day. Mm -hmm. um, it's not an exorbitant amount. Um, the majority of the folks who receive citations come in and do the mea copa i'm you know i'm sorry my bad i didn't pay uh, i parked across two lines i took up extra spaces so we don't have a lot of arguments uh, a lot of conflict but we'll, we'll have a couple in a day typically the the people that take it a step further that want to contest it take it to court is going to be maybe one every two weeks may it may be sometimes less than that and right now we are having our current parking management team take care of the citations, et cetera. 
Does the city inject itself in any way? It's up to them. I don't even know. No. It's really up to them. Yeah. If you get a complaint about our valet, how would you handle it? Uh, about our valet? I'm sorry. Well, the, va the valet in this instance is a third party. Uh, in, in Pompano Beach. outside the purview. I'm just asking how okay. would you handle it? Yeah, we, we typically, we handle the valley in, in Pompano Michelle? Beach. But if, if we were to handle it, I would say. You handle the valley in Palm Beach? In, uh, in Pompano Beach. Beach. So Can let's roll it back. We're not talking valets here. We're no, just. No, no. I just second asked Ms. Cassell's him. motion to approve. Yes, thank you. Yeah, and, and all I'll add is that I think we do have to have a converse, conversation about all the other elements. It's not going to, you know, just for the um, parking board. I, I know oh, there's a lot of other elements. No, 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 that's okay. No. Um, uh, so, but we will, we will address that. I'll be bringing it up at the next meeting during my comments yeah. to get it on a future agenda item. But this doesn't hold up us putting this out the bid, going with staff's recommendation, and, uh, and having the... Um, this new technology and this new partner available so that we can implement some of those uh, recommendations from our parking advisory board. Cynthia, I know that we're still in the discussion period. I didn't get a chance to ask any questions, so if you can come up here, I just have a couple. Is this going to change anything in our meter system or anything like that? Or are they using exactly what we have? We're not, re we're not redoing anything of ours, correct? No, the technology remains the same. Okay. And that convenience fee, that's, a, that's an absolute. That's a fee that we're not seeing any part of, correct? We don't have that currently on our... There is a convenience fee presently. Um, on, on the current ones that yep. we are doing? Yes. If, okay. if, they pay, if they come to the office and they pay cash, they don't have a convenience fee. But if they choose to pay remotely or electronically, there's a convenience fee. But this is going to be without that. It's going to be no matter what, correct? Um, no. No? Okay. All right. So it, it is, it's the same thing. Okay. Very good. Those are the questions that I had. Correct. All right. So we have a motion and a second on the floor. Please call the roll. Ms. Cassell? Yes. Mr. Bolston? Yes. Ms. Johnson? No. Mayor Petrolia? Yes. Mr. Frankel? Yes. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, thank thank you, you. Cynthia. Thank you, everybody else. All right, so finally, I just wanted to bring up one other issue, and that is um, during the campaign, there was, a lot of, um, there was a lot of talk about what was going to happen with Old School Square, and it's keeping me up at night, <laughs> to be quite honest with you. We're moving down the road here with uh, DDA, and I am, I, I mean, I heard it over and over again. I saw it in writing that, you know, our have a look commissioners that are going to come in and change that up, and I have a problem with it. So I just want to let everybody, I'm, I'm making it known that I think that we have got to give ourselves the time to be able to make sure that uh, the DDA has the opportunity of really turning what we have sat idle around. And they're doing a great job in the, between the city and the, and the DDA right now. So I would like to put forward that you know, we, we take out the 180-day um, um, clause that basically would be for, for uh, cancellation for a period of time, just to give them that opportunity. I, I'd be in favor. Me too. I totally agree with that. Um, just that the contract gets to run, it's going to yeah. pass court still. Right. Isn't that you, you agree? I absolutely agree. It's okay. here, though, yeah. right? No, it's so would you make a motion then to do Wait that? a moment. Can we answer Ms. Johnson's question? How long is the contract term? No, it's no. a five-year. It's five. So in other words, nothing can change with that. Is that not correct? The initial term in September 30th, 2024, and then there's two additional five-year terms. Oh, okay. And they, they automatically renew unless um, notice is given, which is 180 days that you're referring Okay, so it, it'll end in 2024. So initial to term, the end, yes. To the end of that, I mean, make it just to the end of that, then. Five years, and we can terminate it 30 days. Listen, I think that they will have had the time to really get their feet on the ground at that point in time or not. And so I my guess. feeling is, is that I don't want to see them being capped at the knees yeah. after we've just paid $500,000. I, 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 I do just want to, and, and I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm absolutely in, in favor. We've made this commitment. Mm -hmm. Right. This is what we've voted on. As a matter of fact, I believe it was unanimous or close to it. Maybe it's 4-1, maybe it's 4-1. Um, but if it's not working out, if, no, if you know, if things are failing, if the doors aren't open, if, you know, we do need a way to make a change. So I, I do want to make well, sure that we'd we still we have, have that. We have that. that. You know what that is? Money. It's the truth. I mean, we're, we're providing. No, I mean, if the partnership isn't working. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? I, I do want to make sure. But the only way you can do that is to have that. My feeling is, is that so far, so good. 
to me. We have a very good organization. If you went yeah. to Saver last night, you would understand these are professionals, anything oh, that they do. So from my perspective, I don't want to see us be undermined by, um, uh, you know, promises that were made that, that are really going to then upset the apple cart again. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're just not, we're, we're not moving forward, uh, you know, quickly yeah, enough. I, and I, we've I, got a lot of things in the pokers in the fire. To have I, to no, no, revisit I this, I, 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 I would. I agree with you, yeah. and, I, and I will not, I absolutely will not, but to not have an out even if it's not working. Mm -hmm. That I don't know if I can be. You have to give it a reasonable amount of time before you could even assess it. But Ms. Johnson asked the question, Attorney Jellin, about making the initial contract period longer than just the year with the renewal. Is that something you could do? And that would ensure? Um, well, the initial contract year ends September 30th, 2024. Yeah, I'm one and a half years from now. Yeah, one and a half years from now. Year. So you could, you could eliminate the, one, the notice requirement for that initial period. Yeah. And then after subsequent, and we'll just put a little disclaimer, you know, for the initial period, um, you know, there will be no termination. Right. The 180 days would start for the first five-year renewal. I don't think much is going to change between now and, and it, you know, in, and at least in the, to the next season because we don't even have option. We're not going to have operational effect of that Crest Theater. I mean, we're just not. So from my perspective, they're going to have – whatever's left on that year to get the Crest Theater up and yeah, up I, as like, well. Yeah, like I said, it would, it's just if, you know, we get to November next year, and I don't foresee it, but if it wasn't working, right? If, like, if it's just not working. No, no, that, that, that goes back in. Huh? This is only just for the year and a half, just to be able to let No, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. November is, is within that year and a yeah, half. Yeah. We're about to go in the season, and the partnership's just not working, and we have no, we have no out, mm -hmm. you know? I, well, I mean, do we have any agreements where we've taken the taking? Yeah, out you do. The opportunity. Got a big one. Well, the, the, well, the yeah, tennis contract. The, tennis contract. <laughs> the difference with the That's tennis right. contract is that the appropriations are built into it. That's right. We don't so have that. So you do one, have that where you don't have to actually have the appropriations. Funding. That's correct. Funding component. So that's that's the holdup, and that's the thing that we still have control okay. over. So it just feels right to me to right. give some, some some support. What do you think, Ms. Jones? I'm not. I'm not averse to it because like the mayor said you every year you have to appropriate this contract mm -hmm. if it's really not working out and you don't have an out clause you can give them zero dollars and yeah. you wouldn't be in violation of the agreement there would be no breach and the the dda would just have to figure out how to right. make it work or they would exercise you know we could mutually yeah. mutually agree to terminate the agreement you know what? I, I i i i'm in favor okay i think maybe at three can we have a motion um so the motion um I mean, the DDA is here. Do you agree? Because <laughs> we, we have to mutually. I mean, I know you have to take it to your board, but I can't right, imagine. So I don't. Do we have Thank to? Thank you. Uh, I mean, I mean sure. we can it's just be brought to her to in our board then, anyways. Exactly. And then can, yeah. That's fine. So right, the motion would just be for the mayor to, to allow the mayor to execute it, and then it would be presented to yeah, the and, DDA. And can you just word the, word the motion as you want it worded, and I'll. Yeah. It's just going to say the initial term of this agreement will begin on the effective date of this agreement and end September 30th, 2024. Um, the agreement will automatically renew for two additional five years um, unless either party provides a written notice. So the, the termination would not affect the initial notice. I, I have to figure so, out how to write it, but I know so, what you want to do. But I'm a, I'm, right. I'm making, making a motion to, um, or hopefully there's a consensus, to remove the 180-day out. From the initial. From, yeah, from, from the, the initial. From, from the initial the ending in um, September 30th, 2024. You want to speak, yes. Laura? Or understand no, what I they're do. doing to you? I, I do understand. Um, I do, I and I... Um, I do understand that. I know we would need to bring that to our board, but I do want to let to answer Ryan's point. Um, it's not working on both sides. I mean, I think that's part of this partnership, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, and part of our commitment as part of the community, we want to make sure it's working. But if it's not, clearly, we want to make sure that that's um, we're all we want it to work, right? So there also is the there is a part of the contract that has a clause if it's if it's not working you can it's with fault basically Correct. you can terminate with because of cause well yeah, so. that, yeah that would be for cause right so. okay good okay. well I, like I said I'm, I made a motion I'm in favor I I'm not going to be here but should there be some discussion about doing something with the Crest Theater eventually yeah we will definitely cross that bridge did we already have a second second okay call the roll please. 
Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Petrolia? Yes. Mr. Frankel? No. Ms. Cassell? Yes. Mr. Balls? Yes. Okay, um, and then there was um, one other thing I wanted to bring up, because I learned this at the TPA, and I'm sorry, I know I keep, <laughs> I, this was not really keep going planned, there, keep going. But it's, it's important to think about police and fire um, going to county. We've, we've actually crossed that bridge with a fire at one time, it, we were considering it. Every other community, or not every other, a lot of communities are requiring it to go to a referendum. I don't want to vote here. I just want to bring it to your attention that it's a very interesting thing. That's a huge decision to be made. Not unlike what we're talking about with respect to land too. So that could be something that we could think about as far as in the future. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at these two guys, especially because you're going to be here. But thinking about um, making a, a referendum, make it, making it have to be a referendum to the people to make these huge decisions like land giveaways or you know police and fire going to the to the county um to Questa just did it so you could look up how they do that and they go to their to to ask for the vote so i just wanted to bring that up because i thought we don't have that we can actually do this autonomously up here and i think it's a big thing to now do whereas maybe when we were forming as a city it wasn't as big a deal you know yeah, now it deal. really is it's all about the dollars in the sense so anyway may um ask, yeah sure question quickly, quickly so if i can the referendum would be that the fire department or the police department would not be allowed to go to the county yes or no that's correct the the the, the people would have to say yes to it okay so if yeah, it would go on the ballot, and then they would have to say, yes, we want to go to county, or no, we want to stay here, that sort of thing. So, again, we're not doing it. So are we are we violating any contractual with the union? No, 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 no. We, could, we could just change it. Right now, we can make that decision. What we could do is make it so that the people would have to be part and parcel to that decision. It's a huge decision for a commission to make, and I think it's something that would bear a lot of responsibility I think it's a really good idea to think about doing what some of our um, our sister cities have done already mm -hmm. anyway just just food for thought that's okay. it Great. anything else yes oh. I don't know correct me if I'm wrong do we not have the Del Rio Fair coming up this coming weekend no 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 it's April week after April, uh, Easter. Yeah, week it's after the Easter. week after Easter I got 14th. something I yeah, thought April it was 14th. this weekend yeah. okay my April bad 14th. Okay. Oh wait, April fourteenth, same time as the Billie Jean King. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep, we've had that conversation. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Right. That's it. Meeting adjourned, everyone. Good night, everyone. See you next week. Thank I'm seeing you on two days. Thursday. Yes, yes we will.